All right, y'all. We give praise, esteem, and honor. The Abba and Shamayim in the name of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. John chapter 5, verse 3 9. Search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life, and there they which testify me. And you would not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you. That you have not the love of Allah in you. I come in Abba's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, excuse me, him you will receive. How can you believe we receive honor one from another and not the honor that come from Allah only? Do not think that I will accuse you. Do the Abba there is one that accuses you, even Moses to whom you trust. All the steam and praise of Abba and Shamayim in the name of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Let's get straight into it. Job chapter 2, verse 1. So we talked about a few things in the book of Job in like what chapters 30, 31, so on and so forth. Look that. But also just because I talked with somebody, that's what it was. It happened. Pick up something for the lay the house on Monday. That was a Tuesday, whatever that was. That was a I don't know. So, uh, and I mentioned some things like this here, man. And because I talked with somebody earlier in the week about this here, man, we're going to look at some of the things as it pertains to correction, which will actually tie into this verse in Job that we're going to look at. And when I'm talking about correction, I'm talking about correction as it pertains to a child. You know what I'm talking about? Shalom, Jay. Because one thing, and it's just something that we're going to hit on tomorrow also. By the grace of Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, whether y'all realize, we've been taught a lot of things and learned a lot of things. Now, some things you might pay attention to more ardently than others. You know what I'm talking about? But you've been shown the framework of how a multitude of things go and how this man operate in certain situations and circumstances. Some things don't probably just latch into your mind. You know what I'm talking about? Because see, one thing by who see, and this, and this is in my brain also, shut on, Brother Margaret, just because brothers were talking about that as it pertains to that new covenant and you'll have no man to teach you. I think we talked about that last week a little bit. Is that uh, you who is not the type of father, if you would, who gonna keep telling you the same thing and over and over? Shalom, brother Reynolds. Man, congratulations again, man. You know, praise the Lord, man. Brother Reynolds had had a good old son born. Helpfully, I just seen a young lady who I went to school with, man. Uh, shoot, her baby just passed two weeks ago, man. And she she uploaded a picture of her holding the baby, man, while he had while he was deceased. I was like, dang, I would have rather not have seen that. You know what I'm saying? What's good, though? So, so, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I should praise you, Lord, man. Thank you. Lord. So, uh, yeah. So, we're going to take a look at that, man, especially in the aspect of you going to see how that correction relates to his son. What's going on, peace, brother Omar? And then it, how it relates to you facilitating how you who raises with your offspring, more specifically your sons in, in this regard. So Job chapter 2, verse 1. And there was a day when the sons of Elohim came to present themselves before Yahuwah, and Hashatan came also among them to present himself before Yahuwah. Yahuwah said unto Hashatan, from whence come you? And Hashatan answered, Yahuwah said, from, uh, answered Yahuwah and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And Yahuwah said unto Hashatan, if you consider my servant Job, Shalom, Amun, that none is like him in the earth, perfect and upright man, one that fear Elohim and eschew evil, and he still hold fast his integrity, although you move me and attempt to destroy him without cause. And Hashatan answered Yahuwah and said, skin for skin, yea, all that a man have, he will give for his life. Now I told you, you know what I'm saying? Shalom, sister uh, Miriam. Uh, I had a conversation with a dude and the dude responded to me with what Satan said here. That's why we're looking at it right now. You know what I'm talking about? But I want you to tell him what integrity meant in the verse proceed. That's Tukmah, <clears throat> integrity, innocence. Man, innocent. 
He said, even in your innocence, you'll get everything for your life. Now, listen. Let me see what's what we want to, to grab a Job. Man, I know we want a Job 26. I know it was some things I mentioned for you to pay attention to, but Job 30. Let me swing around there and see, man. Do, do we want to live some stuff in Job 29? Man, how can you help? Give them with the definition of help. How can you help when you don't have any power? Well, let's look at power also. That is bizarre to help. To That's the same word that you're going to use for, see, for help me. How can you be an aid, help, and a relief when you don't have any what? Powers, co-op. Co That's strength. That's might. Now, pause and think about that. How can you help when you have no power? Look at what this man say in John 14 and 15. Let's see how he remedied this situation. If you love me, keep my commandments. What are you going to do? I'll pray the Abba and he shall give you another comforter. He's going to give you Noah. That he may abide with you forever. What are you going to do after that? Of truth whom the world cannot receive because it see him not. What else? You need to know him, but you know him. What he else? well with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you. Come on, brother Shaul. I, 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 I won't leave you what? Comfortless. What else you ain't going to do? I will come to you yet a little while and the world see me no more. Pause. Now I want you to come over to the epistle of Jude. I want you to pick me up, man, probably about verse 15 and let that go. The epistle of Jude, man, about verse 15. To execute judgment upon all, to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed. Come on, with all their heart, which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. Mm -hmm. These are murmurers, complaining, walking after their own lust, their mouth having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Mm -hmm. But beloved, remember you the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord, Yahusha and Mashiach, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. Who should walk after their own ungodly lust? That's right. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not having the what? Ruach. Not have, not having the ruach. See, this is how they ain't got no help because they ain't got no power. Can you bring me up, bring me up, bring me up when you get a moment? Go ahead. So keeping yourselves, oh, but you beloved, building up yourselves on your most kadash faith. Building up yourselves on your what? Most kadash faith. What else after that? Turning in the ruach hakadash. What up? Keep yourselves in the love of Elohim. Keep yourselves in the what? Love of Elohim. And what's gonna happen? Looking for mercy of our Lord Yahweh Mashiach unto eternal life. And what the Lord gonna do? And of some having compassion, making a difference, and others saved with fear, pulling out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. And who? And the Lord. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. He's able to keep you from what? From falling. Now Paul, see. This is how you get help when you have no what? No power. Now go to Romans 5 and 1. Let's see what that help look like, how that help get manifest when you ain't got no power. We yes. could look at 2 Peter chapter 1. I just might. Come on with it. Therefore being justified by faith. Being yes. justified by what? By faith. So you righteous because of your faith. We already see that with Abraham. We ain't got to talk about it. Go ahead. We have shalom with Elohim through our master, Yahweh Mashiach, mm -hmm. by whom also we have access by faith into this mercy wherein we stand. Notice that you say you got access into, into the what? To this mercy wherein we stand. So look, look here, right? Now, pause. I need y'all to consider that for a moment. Thank you. I need y'all to consider that for a moment. He's by what? By faith. You got access to what? It's mercy. Notice that he didn't say, by the law, you got access to mercy. Why, why wouldn't he say that? Y'all know why wouldn't he say that? Because the law doesn't have mercy prescribed in it. If you get caught laying with another man's wife, what does the law prescribe? If you get caught working idols, what does the law prescribe? Now, if you want to look at by, by faith, you get obtained for mercy. All you got to do is look at Exodus chapter 12. That was by faith that they got the mercy of God to be delivered out of Egypt, right or wrong. Okay. Okay. I didn't want to make sure that you see that out your law. We got a whole bunch of things you can look at it when it pertains to it. It's right there in there. At the point, that's why he tell you that he that don't know the law is cursed. You see, you think because you don't know the law, you curse if, if you're not keeping it. If you're not paying attention to the things that we cycle through in this law on a regular basis, that means you're not going to know it. That means you're not going to be able to have a proper foundation to preach the Shiite from. See, I just was had a conversation with somebody yesterday. That nigga was wilding. You know what I'm saying? Now, he believes in the same thing that we believe in, which is through the testimony of Mashiach, you can be made pure and live a life free from transgression. But the niggas, just like what Paul said in one of his epistle letters, some people preach Mashiach out of contention. You know what I'm talking about? Let me find that for you. Why it's on my mind. That's on my mind. I like this. Yeah, I had to go off on that nigga. You know what I'm saying? That nigga talking crazy to me. I said, I don't know who you think you're talking to. Because, boy, you can't even hold your tongue, boy. How you going to be able to preach the Lord? You can't shut your goddamn mouth, boy. Philippians 1, man. Man, give me verse 12. 
I mean, some some being some of uh, be from out of Moon, but some of them man coming from where he was coming from, that's what these boys do. You know what I'm saying? It's it, they be in battle mode all the time. You know what I'm saying? I'm not I'm not in battle mode all the time. I don't have to be. But if you disrespect me, I will chop your head straight off your shoulders, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not gonna play with you. I'm not gonna play with you. And when I say that, meaning I'm gonna slap you upside your head with this word, man, and you gonna know better. Because like I said, because I don't go out disrespecting people. You know what I'm talking about? See, some people feel like I disrespect them. See, Jimmy was clowning about that earlier. Because see, I'm gonna tell you the truth. If you ask me something, I'm not gonna lie to you. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna clean it up and make it nice. You know what I'm talking about? I tell you like this here, man. I remember I was telling man, my homeboy Yaya, when we was up, when I was finna get ready to go out the road, this was this nigga's birth name, by the way. You know what I'm saying? It was a Muslim name. That was his real name. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he was like, man, you can't be saying this that day in the third, man. Them niggas going this. I said, man, I ain't worried about a nigga doing nothing to me, bro. You know what I'm talking about? But I'm not finna lie to you. Not if I fool with you. I'm not finna look you in your face and lie to you. You know what I'm saying? My homeboy, well, I told y'all, my homeboy asked me, man, you think I'm going to hell? I looked at him. I said, man, you know where you went. You want to see if I'm a lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. You know what I'm talking about? If you state something, I'm going to tell you what it is plainly. What you want somebody to lie to you for? One thing I can tell you, boy, Monty used to say this all the time, man, you'll get over it. If you a grown man worrying about your feelings, boy, you in the wrong place at the wrong time, meaning you should have been in a woman's body. As a grown man, nobody give a damn about your feelings, nigga. When I'm talking about nobody care about your feelings, meaning nobody don't care about your feelings being hurt because somebody said something you ain't want to hear. Not if you had some type of traumatic experience. You know what I'm saying? Of course somebody care about your feelings if you had a traumatic experience. But if you think somebody care about your feelings because you want to be justified, nigga, eat doo-doo and die. Straight like that. Shalom, sister me. Come on with it, man. I said, but I would, you should understand, brethren, things unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds of Mashiach are manifest in all the palace and in all other. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Go ahead. Some indeed preach Mashiach even of some, envy and strife. Some people preach Mashiach out of what? Of envy and strife. Out of what? Envy and strife. Man, you got people who only want to preach the Lord because they envy other people and they got contention in their heart. Think it's a game if you want to. Go ahead. And some also of goodwill. Some do it out of goodwill. What the, else? The one preach Mashiach of contention. One preach about a contention. Not sincerely. Not what? Not sincerely. Tell them what sincerely means, man. That's hagnos. That's chaste, clean, pure. With sincerity. Don't you put that in there. Hey, get that spoon. Say it again. That is hagnos. That's chaste, clean, pure, with sincerity, honestly. Mmm. Without honesty, you know that take you back to right Yahushua Son of chapter 24, verse 14. Serve you who in sincerity and truth. Same thing that Paul wrote is for for that man. Tell him what go ahead and read it for him, man. Yahushua Son of chapter 24, verse 14. You give him the definition of the word, by the way. There it is. But I'm gonna say the wisdom that descends from heaven is uh it's uh dang, I can't see. It said, yeah, if it don't come from there, it's, it's earthly, essential. It's Look here, man. You got a lot of people that that's just what they like to do. That's not the Ruach of the living Elohim. I can tell you that right now. There's a difference for contending for the faith and just want to do it out of contention and not out of honor. Because if you're doing it out of an honest and sincere heart, it's for the benefit of the salvation of the hero. Go ahead, man. Yahushua, son of chapter 24, verse 14. Say, now therefore fear you who and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Serve him in what? Sincerity and in truth. Go ahead and tell him what sincerity and truth mean, man. It's basically just going to be Ruach and truth if, if, if you don't remember. That's Tamim for sincerity. That's time. Ta sin sincerity is Tamim. That's perfect. So long, brother Robert. That's perfect. That's in innocence. That's with integrity. That man say, serve you who and perfect it and what else? In a mess, you're not paying attention to what you're doing, and then that's that's firmness, faithfulness. What word it was again? A mess, a ma. So, you already know this here. This is serve him in Ruach and in truth, like he told you in John. You thought the Lord, hey, what are you doing? You think you think the Lord the, the, the said something new, and he told you what Yahushua son of Noon told you. That's what he told you. Serve the man in perfection and truth. 
what he told you. Be you perfect as your what? Father in heaven is perfect, is it not? And he told you your Elohim is a Ruach. That's what you're supposed to do. Everybody don't preach Mashiach from that vantage point, man. You have to be wise enough to know that. You know what I'm saying? You have to be wise enough to know that. If you don't, I feel for you like Shaka Khan. Come on back over here to Philippians, man. Philippians, what, 1 and 16? Mm -hmm. Come on with it. Say the one preached with shock of contention, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bones, mm. but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. At all times. Come what? on back to mm -hmm. Romans 5. That's all I wanted you to hear. That's the day and time we living in right now, man, for the most part. Most people only want to preach the word out of contention and strife. You know what I'm talking about? Envying and all that old other stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's it. That's all they want to do. Man, this ain't no sport. This ain't no recreation. You want to do something for recreation, go to the park and play basketball. You know what I'm talking about? You want to do something for recreation, man, get you an easel and go paint something. Go ahead, man. Say, therefore, being justified by faith, we have shalom with Elohim through our Lord, Yahweh Mashiach, by whom also we have access by faith into this mercy where we stand and rejoice in hope of the esteem of Elohim. Listen. Not only, but we esteem in tribulations also. We esteem in what? Tribulations also. What else? Knowing that tribulations work patience. Tribulation work what? Patience. And patience work what? Experience. And experience bring what? Hope. And hope what, do what? Make not a shame. Listen to what he said. the love of Elohim is shed abroad in our hearts. See, now what we're looking at, when you look at Job, Job had tribulation, and that tribulation work patience, and that patience work experience. And then there was hope, and hope didn't make him a shame. See, when the boy I tell you, them boy were arguing what type of God would do that. See, you can't let me tell you something, man. I'm gonna be honest with you. Especially when you're dealing in intellectual circles, right? The word the faith in Yahuwah don't mix with, with being philosophical, intellectual, or scholarly. It don't mix. And you know why it don't mix? Because you have to trust in the word of Yahuwah that Yahuwah is faithful and that he's true, and that Elohim is not a man that he should lie nor the son of a man that he should repent. And if he said it, that he going to do it. And a lot of people, they can't do that. They can't do that. They want they want to study their way to verify if he's true. They want some type of, to show that he's true. He done showed you the proof and he gave you his word. Now you either believe him on his word or you don't. And that is very difficult for people. That's why he say faith is the substance of the evidence of things hoped for not seen. You know what I'm talking about? See, we were talking about this earlier. And they were talking about life after death. You know what I'm talking about? See, when you look in the text, the text does not scribe life after death. Let me show you something the Lord said. Go over here to uh, what it is. It's hard for people to understand because you've never seen someone who was dead come back alive and live forever after that. You've never seen it. You know what I'm talking about? So since because you've never seen it, you're going to have to believe that on the strength of the witness that was given before the Lord actually manifested in the flesh, died and rose and ascended back. See, I think I forgot to mention that when we were looking at that in Esther, when it said how they gave gifts to the poor. But if I did, forgive me. But remember what he said in Psalm 68 and 18. Hey, cut it out. He said he, he took captivity captive and ascended on high. And gave gifts to men, even for the rebellious also, that Yahuwah Elohim might dwell amongst them. And what you see, when he said, what did they do on Purim? They gave gifts to the poor. Who's the poor? It's those who are wanting, those who are in need, those who are in help. Because how can you have help without power? See, you can't get aid, help, and relief without the power of God. That's why the people is in the state that they're in. And this is the thing that niggas don't understand. You can't get the power of God without faith. You can't get it through the law. You can't get it through your nationality. That's the only way you can access it. And most people don't believe. You might know a lot. You might can recite a lot, but you don't believe it. You don't trust in it. You don't rely in it. You have no hope of expectation of reward from this man based off what he said. I say, you know, y'all already know this. I've known a lot of brothers for years that debate and deal with scholarly things. I ain't mad at them. That's not my lane. I am a preacher. I believe wholeheartedly every single solitary word that has emanated out of the mouth of the living Elohim. You know what I'm talking about? Like, shoot, my own boys, they were just climbing. They should have heard them. They were climbing about the sons of God. Say it's different. And, 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 and that social group, because people giving their fans, but it's also some just some good-natured ribbon. 
You know what I'm talking about? Along with it. But like I told him, I said, hey, I don't hold the stance that the sons of God are, uh, are angels. But I don't hold that stance because I cycle it through the testimony of Mashiach. Not because of anything other than that. Because I don't give a damn what a scholar say. And you know why I don't give a damn what a scholar say? Because I don't know if that scholar had the Ruach of Elohim. See, if that scholar, if you're not leading through the testimony of Mashiach, I'm already not really holding to high regard what you got to say anyway. Anyway, you think this man resurrected from the dead and taught them men that just to do it? You don't think that's not that's not important? Why would he take the time to do it? Why would he send them to do it? And as I've been telling y'all a lot lately, there's a reason why you read in Luke 24 that he does not. It does not show what he showed them, where he showed them, and what he showed them in each individual book. It don't show it because that's your who to give. And that's where a lot of people are going to stumble at because there's a lot of things we can say. Where's the book, chapter, and verse for that? Or that and and as, as, as much as people don't want to hear that, it takes the Ruach of God for this here, brother. That's outside of my hands because I can show it to you. That don't mean you're going to believe it. And it's not my business if you do. Because I can't make you believe anything. Only Yahuwah can open your heart to faith. I can't do that. Come on with it, man. Where we at with it? Romans 5 still? Matthew. Matthew 22 and 27, man. Let it go. Say, and, last, and last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For, all, for they all had her. Y'all shine into the seven to them. You do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of Elohim. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the Malachim of Elohim and Shamanim. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have you not read that which was spoken unto you by Elohim saying? Have you not read what he said? What he said? I am the Elohim of Abraham. The Elohim of who? Of Abraham. And? The Elohim of Isaac. And? The Elohim of Jacob. He's not the? Elohim is not the Elohim of the dead. But who? Of the living. What that meant? Matter of fact, screw it, man. John chapter 11, verse 44. You say, you can tell them. It don't matter. They yeah, I mean... One thing about it, man, I'm not finna browbeat nobody upside the head with nothing. You know what I'm saying? I can't do nothing but shoot you to work. You who got a breath? Come on with it. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Mm -hmm. Yahushua said unto them, Loose and let him go. Let him go, baby. Then many of the Yahudim which came to Mary and had seen the things which Yahushua did, believed on him. But some of them went. Oh, I got you out of pocket. That's my bad. I got you out of pocket. 20, 20. I got you out of pocket. That's my bad. John 11 and 23. Yahweh said unto her, your brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. See, Paul, see, we'll look at a lot of stuff and say the ancient Hebrew believed is Why Mary believed that this man, Shalom, bro. Why Mary believed that, that Lazarus was going to rise from the dead? Where did she get that from? Well, we know she had to get that from some type of understanding from the word. See, we were talking about that earlier, dude. We were talking about that earlier, talking about flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom. Man, that man didn't tell you he was flesh and blood when he rose from the dead. He told you he was flesh and bone. And then he showed you that in Ezekiel. But you got goofy niggas telling you that's you waking up to your nationality. So you can't see the resurrection of the dead in Ezekiel when you read it. You can't see this man been telling you who can redeem his brother from death. Who can pay that ransom? Can't nobody pay that price for you. But your Elohim, he came and prayed. That's why we're going to look at how he said, skin for skin, yea, a man to give, give his life for everything that he had. The Lord did. He did. He gave up everything he's had for his life. Not in the aspect how Satan came at Job, but Yahushua did that. So you could get, have you forgotten what it said, that he made himself poor, that you might be rich? Is that not a man giving up everything he had for his life? But the life was not to save his own soul. It was to save yours. Never thought about where Mary got it from. But it was known and she believed. Yeah, 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 man. Keep on going to John, though. Where you at with it? Because I don't think I heard. John 11, 25. Listen to what the Lord said. said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believe on me. So shall do dead, what? Yet shall he live. He said, though that he be what? We're dead. Yet shall he live. You know why? Because Elohim is the Elohim of the living, and you who will never die. So wherever his word is, there's life, whether you be in the grave or whether you be above it. So it's not a it's not it's not an afterlife with us, man. 
There's not no afterlife. You are in life for totality. You know what I'm saying? That's that's just what it is. If the word of you, who is in you, peace, brother Nate, ain't no death in you. How you gonna be dead with God in you? Because you went to sleep for a season? No, man, that ain't how the game go. Come on with it, my dear. And whosoever live and believe in me shall never die. Believe you this. He say, he that do what? Live <laughs> and believe in me shall never taste death. Do you believe that? Most people don't. Most people don't. That's why they can't get no help. Because they're without power. They're, you know it. Isaiah 26 and 3. I don't need no read. You already know that. I stand on this. What that thing said in, uh, he said that's why Alicia's bones brought people to life. Definitely. Listen, we can look at that too. I got it for days. Listen. So you will Hold be, on, hold on. Listen. What that nigga said in American Gangster? What's going on, Brother Robert? What that nigga said in American Gangster? He said it's like a brand. It's Pepsi. Like, you know what I'm saying? I stand on that. Isaiah 26 and 3, boy, I stand on that. You know what I'm saying? With every ounce of my soul. I can still remember from 2009, the first time I ever read that man, it resonated with me to this very moment that we sit here this evening. Shalom is, man. Carry on. Isaiah 26 and 3. You will keep in perfect shalom whose mind is stayed on you. Keep you in perfect what? Shalom. Who mind what? Stayed on because you. he what? Trust in you. See, most people's mind ain't stayed on you who because you don't trust in him. What did we read in Jeremiah 17? If you trust in him, he remove anxiety. And he said, you'll never cease from yielding fruit. You will consistently produce love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, faith, which against such there is no law. And if there's no law against that, guess what that means? That's life in perpetuity. Because you would be as Elohim. You see the beauty of your God? Continue on this. Earth. Trust you in Yahuwah forever, for in Yahuwah is everlasting strength. Trust in Yahuwah forever, for trust in Yahuwah is everlasting strength. That's why the people ain't got no help. Because you ain't got no power. And you ain't got no power because you don't trust in Yahuwah. And that ain't nobody fault but y'all. I ain't got nothing to do with that. Person sitting next to you ain't got nothing to do with that. He said, uh, this is interesting. What about the corruption that these bodies must? Oh, no, no, no. See, I get that. And we can deal with that. He's asking about what about the corruption aspect of this flesh. And we can get to that. Give me Ezekiel 37. Give me Ezekiel 37 3 real quick. Oh no, that's a good question. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Ezekiel 37 3. Listen to it. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, Oh, you who are Hold on, back it up. Back it. He said, Can these bones what? Can these bones live? Can these bones what? Live. What he said after that? And I answered, Oh, you who Elohim, you know. Mm. What he said after that? And again, he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones. And say, he said, do what to the bones? Prophesy upon these bones. He said, do what to the bones? Prophesy upon these bones. Revelation 19 and 10. After that, John 6 and 63. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see not, I am your fellow servant and of your brethren that had the testimony of Yahweh Shah. The testimony of who? Of Yahweh Shah. The testimony Worship Elohim for the testimony of Yahweh Shah is the Ruach of prophecy. It's the what of prophecy? The Ruach of prophecy. Now he just told him the to prophecy to them bones, did he not? Mm -hmm. Remember, what do them bones represent? <laughs> that too. Genesis 2 and 21. <laughs> what we're looking at is, is that Mashiach was able to do for his wife what Adam wasn't able to do for his. Though both died for their wife, one was able to supply life, the other was not. Genesis 2 and 21. And who Allah caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept. And he took one of his ribs. What did Adam say? This is now bone of my bones. And, and what? Flesh of my flesh. Notice right. He said, can these bones live? Did any of us ever pause and consider why it was a valley of dry bones? And why he telling him to speak to the bones? Because he telling them, like he said in Jose, go speak comfortably to your wife or go speak to her heart. Or like what Jeremiah 31 tell you, I will draw you with loving kindness. You know what I'm talking about? See, a lot of us don't want to do that because you don't want to draw people with who the book say Elohim is love. He literally declares that in Exodus 34. 
He said, that's what I'm going to draw you with. He going to draw you with, with who he is through the manifestation of his actions. That's what he meant when he said, I come in my Abba's name. You think, because he said, that, you, that meaning, you who are not this. That means you don't really know the word like that. Oh, thank you. And when I say you don't know the word like that, not that you don't know precepts, not that you don't know chapters, but that you don't know God, because then you don't know how he operates to have a manifestation of his operation that people say, surely the Ruach of Elohim is in this person. You understand? So when you see him say, can these bones live? You know what I'm talking about? Ah, oh, praise you, brother. Can these bones live? He's speaking about us. Can these bones live? He said, you know. So the life for the bones was never about the flesh, if you would. The life with the bones was always pertinent to Yahuwah being in you. That whether That's why he said that the dead of Mashiach shall rise first and those that are alive won't stop them. That's why he said he's the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's not the Elohim of the dead, but the living. So even though that flesh may, matter of fact, pause. Don't need excuse for that one either. I appreciate you asking that, these two, man. We sprinkle some more stuff in there before we even get back to what we in. Uh, Job 26, folks. <clears throat> For I know my Redeemer lives. I know my who? My Redeemer lives. I know my who? My Redeemer lives. Okay. And he shall stand at the ladder upon the earth. Mm -hmm. After my skin destroy this body. He said, flesh, after my skin what? Destroy this. Yet in my flesh shall I see Allah. Yet in my flesh I'll see who? Allah. And not what? Whom I shall see for myself. Who I see for my who? For myself. And not another. And my eyes shall be behold, and not another. Mm. My reins be consumed within me. He said, even though my flesh be destroyed, I'm still alive. And you know why I'm still alive? Because my Redeemer lives. You know what I'm talking about? See, that's why he said, if you live and believe in me, you'll never taste death. He said, I'm the resurrection and the life. So if you believe your Redeemer lives, you'll never taste death. Even if your flesh is corrupted and wasted away, life is forever with you. That don't depart from you. See, there's a difference from the Ruach HaKadosh before Mashiach and after. You understand? God bless Brother Smoke. See, before the Ruach, before Mashiach, the Ruach HaKadosh was not a permanent indwelling. That's why I say I won't leave you comfortless. After Mashiach, once you receive that, that man riding with you. And you know why he riding with you? I'm going to get to it because I'm going to have to read 2 Peter 9. But where you was at before we just swung over here? Matter of fact, take me to 2 Peter, man. Chapter 1, man. I'm going to go ahead and do it. We holding Ezekiel 37 and Job 26, by the way. We get back to John 6 and 63 also. But I need to go on head over here to 2 Peter chapter 1, man. I need to go and do that right now. Joanne, sit down and hush your mouth. The 99 on that. Second Peter 1 and 3. Listen to what he said. He said, according as his divine power has Pause, given, according to his what? As his divine he power. He said, how can you have help where there is no power? So according to this divine power, notice because that help is that comforter. Listen to what he said. He's given unto us all things that what? That pertain unto life and God. So he's given you everything that pertains to what is godliness. That's faithfulness. Everything that pertains to life and faith, he's given that to you. That take you back to what we read in Yahushua Son of Noon, chapter 24, verse 14. Serve this man in sincerity and truth, or Tamayim and Amal. Serve this man in perfection of faithfulness. You know what I'm talking about? That's why he call it the righteous obedience of faith. That's why he say to just live by their faith. See, a lot of brews don't want to talk about faith, but faith brings forth perfection. You're not going to be perfected by the law. It was never intended to. But faith will perfect you, and you'll keep the law by reason of that perfection. See, Brew got it backwards. The law not going to make you perfect for you to believe. You believe and then you be made perfect and you keep the law by product of your perfection. You know what I'm talking about? You don't want to be perfect because you don't believe. Because at the end of the day, what, do, what level of faith do it take for you not to be a sissy? For you not to worship idol God? You cannot do all of them things and not believe a single solitary promise that this man done made. Because I done seen it. You know what I'm talking about? I'm not telling you what I heard. I'm not telling you what somebody told me. I'm telling you what I seen. Go ahead, man. He say, and the, he say through the knowledge of him that have called you to what? To esteem and virtue. 
whereby are we given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that you might be partakers of what? The divine nature. Having done what? Escape the corruption that is in the world. He said, and beside this, then what? All Add to your faith what? Virtue. Paul, what is virtue? What does that mean? He said, after you get this virtue, he said, put some knowledge with it. So then you need the knowledge of God first. Well, secondly, he said, after you get this faith, you need to add some virtue. What is virtue, good sir? That's a virtuous course of thought, feeling, and action. A virtuous thought of thought, feeling, and action. So you need that. You need some faith to clean up your thought process, and then you need the knowledge of God to add that with it. And then after that, what did he say? What did he say, man? After you add virtue, knowledge, into knowledge, what? Temporary. So once you got knowledge of God, there should be some self control. After temperance, he said, now you need to add what? Patience. Now you learn the patience through what? Tribulations. And tribulations bring forth experience and experience hope. And hope make not a shame because that's what Isaiah told you. Shalom, my G. That's what Isaiah told you. He said, I said in Zion, a cornerstone, a chief cornerstone. All that believe on him shall not be ashamed. Continue. He said, after that temperance, you need to add what? Patience. And to patience, what? Godliness. Tell them what godliness means in Greek, because it means something different in, in Hebrew. Man. Once you get self-control, you need to have patience to wait on Yahuwah. And after that, he said, put some godliness on top of that. Now, we done went through this before, piece by piece, and like element by element, but I don't have the time to do that this evening. I ain't going to lie to you. Not well, what else we got to do. That's a whole endeavor all to itself. Go ahead. That's you survive. That's reverence, respect, piety towards Elohim. That's godliness, holiness. He said that that means to be holy and to have the fear of God. So he said, once you have added self control and patience, fear God and be kadash, be holy, be set apart. Mm. After you've added this godliness, what you need to add after that? Brotherly kindness. That means now you need to be kind to your brother, like, like David was to Jonathan and vice versa. And after brotherly kindness, what you need to add after that? Now you need to love your neighbor as you love yourself and to love Elohim with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength. You, you see that this is not a difficult endeavor. And if you have added all these things to your faith, guess what you'll never be? Dead. Because you would never cease from yielding fruit. Why? Because blessed is he who trusts in Yahuwah, whose hope Yahuwah is. Because he be as a tree that's planted by the rivers of water that won't see when heat come, nor have anxiety, and will never cease from yielding fruit. You'll never cease from yielding the righteousness of God. It won't stop. Continue, good sir. And for if these things be what? In you and abound. They make you what? Neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord, Yahushua Mashiach. Because but he that lacked these things is blind and cannot see far off. And mm. I forgot that he was purged from his old sin. No, notice what he said. If you <laughs> lack these things, you don't know the type of sinner you was. See, not that you're supposed to dwell on what type of sinner you were. He said, if you lack these things in your arrogance, you forgot where he delivered you from. Continue. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Make your calling and election what? Sure. And, and, and if you do these things, you shall never fall. didn't he tell that this man able to keep you from falling? Mm -hmm. Didn't that man tell you that? Do you see how this man said, these things be in you, man, you're not going to die. You're not going to stumble. That's not going to... How you going to stumble if you done added from your faith virtue, which is a, a clean state of mind, then the knowledge of God after that, then self-control after that, then the ability to wait on Yahuwah after that, then to fear Yahuwah and be holy after that, to love your brother after that, and to have love after that. How you going to stumble? How is that possible? But you got, tell, you got people telling you that you would because they're not telling you how to live, man. They telling us how to die. Come on back to Ezekiel 37.3. She gonna do her time. Ezekiel 37.3. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, oh, Yahuwah Elohim, you, you know. know. Again, he said unto me, on these bones and say to them, Oh, you dry bones, hear the word of your whore. Oh, you dry. Why these bones dry? Because they in the pit where there is no water. Didn't he tell you, Give me Zechariah 99 on the house? Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king come unto you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass. Listen to what he said. Upon a colt, the foal of an ass. 
Listen and to what I he said. off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. Come on, verse and 11, finna tell the tale. And the battle bow shall be cut off. He shall speak shalom unto the heathen and his dominion from sea to sea and from the river to the end of the earth. Mm -hmm. As for you also by the blood of your covenant. By the blood of your what? Of your covenant. What are you going to do with that blood? I sent forth your prisoners out of the pit wherein no water. He said, I sent forth your prisoners out of the pit where there was no water. That man said, he that commits sin is the servant of sin. He set you free. Out of the pit where there was no water. That's why them bones were dry. You think the bones dry because you in America? You a damn fool. And you're not a fool because you just stupid. You a fool for listening to the jackass who told you that. Because you would have to ask yourself, how did that even make any sense? How did that even make any sense? Yeah, see, we the dry bones because we the... Nigga, that don't make sense. Why did I believe that? You know the sad part what doesn't happen, man. You went from one unskilled scribe in your Christian church telling you not, not knowing what he's talking about to a Hebrew who don't know what he's talking about. And that's unfortunate. You know, and you know why I mentioned that stuff with the, the strife and continue, like I said, how to do with acting, man. Because now I've told y'all this numerous times, man. Nobody don't care about us, man. These niggas don't care about us, man. These people don't care if your soul gets saved, they don't care if your faith gets stronger. They don't care if you draw closer to Elohim. They don't care if you get perfected. They don't care if you receive the Ruach HaKadosh. These niggas don't care. And it's evident. So then we got to ask ourselves, why are we enthralled, enjoined, and in love with people who don't care about your soul? Why does that sit well with you? Because most of these niggas want to be seen. Most of these niggas want somebody to follow them, man. Let me tell you something, man. Let me be honest with you. And my little sister right here, she could tell you the, tell you the same. Man, when we started, man, it didn't even cross my mind that damn people gonna get down with what we got going on. It would jump and our sister Nell, that was it. For a long time, too. We were never on the internet. I'm talking about at the house, man. In the street with it. People coming to the house. They ain't never think about. I remember one time because I used to send work to one person, and then mother would say, "Well, what mind that?" Because it never clicked click my mind. And like, oh, I need to send this to this person or this person or nothing. I did with telling Sean, boy. It was a time period with me, boy. You were gonna have to catch me in person. You know what I'm talking about, man? The only reason why we praise y'all, indeed, uh, Emma Sharon. The only reason why we own this thing, man. Because my people set it up. When I say that, I'm talking about Nell and Dwight. They the main reason. They the reason. Once I started seeing that a lot of people were sliding through and they looking for work, I'm like, yeah, man, I'm gonna have to do it now. It can't be like I don't, I don't feel like doing it. I don't want to do it. Ain't never thought, yeah, people gonna follow you. You got to be a real goofy individual to be looking for followers, man. In my personal opinion, that's a poor. That, that's a definitely a reflection on how you view yourself. Uh, a, a strong reflection of poor self-esteem, a need for validation, and a desire for adulation. Go see a therapist. You need help. You know what I'm talking about? That ain't what you're supposed to be in it for. But it's a real deal. Man, it's a real deal gig, man. You know what I'm talking about? This ain't just something to do on a Friday afternoon. It's a real deal gig, man. Come on with it. The reason why I say that is because everybody be looking at with this person, this person. Look here, man. Who you, why you care who follow who? If that man sent you to do some work, man, and he got 15 people with you, then watch over them 15 people. If he got 20,000 people with that person, then let that man watch over them. That's not your house. Why you care? I just seen niggas beefing, talking about you coming in my city preaching. What's wrong with you niggas, man? That man said, if they don't be against us, they be for us. These niggas act like they got monopoly on this man people and on this man word and on, the, on cities, man. You out your rabid mind, boy. Somebody need to find a stone tablet and slap you right upside the back of your head for being a dummy. You ain't seen nowhere in this book where any servant of God was mad because another servant of God came through to drop some word, man. He didn't care. Why do you think this man told you to pray that the Lord of the harvest send more laborers into his harvest for the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few? You should want as many people. As didn't didn't Yahusha, didn't, didn't uh, Yahusha son of Nun run to Moses and say they prophesied in the camp? He said, don't envy for my sake. He said, would be to Yahuwah that all his people would prophesy. 
These pussy niggas thinking somebody trying to stop you. You ain't got nothing, ho nigga. Ain't nothing to stop. Come on, man. That's right, brother Omar. You good with the second line? Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, John 6 and 63 with it. Matter of fact, wait on that. Go back to Ezekiel 37. Yeah, man, I, man, I got to tell a little dude, he trying to tell him, how many ministries you got? Nigga, why do you, why are you trying to put, you think somebody can? Let me tell y'all something real, man. What that, what, what you talking about, Sean? Let me tell y'all something, man. And I told my sister this a long time ago. I'm talking about my sister now, I told her this a long time ago. This is not a competition. It's not. If you get in the word, man, and you call yourself, you want to preach the word, and you worry about what did, bro, I have never, I have never sat around and been focused on what any other congregation is doing. For no other reason, then, that's not my business. I'm focused on what we're doing and what we got to do. I don't have time to be worrying about what somebody doing over here and what somebody doing over there. Are there people in who run other congregations that we fool with? Absolutely. Absolutely. But I'm not worried about what they're doing. I don't sit around thinking about, I wonder what they're teaching or trying to find dudes' teachings and try to find error and fault with dudes' teachings or trying to figure out if God with them. And I ain't got time for that. That's whole stuff. Oh, yeah, I've heard about that before, man. I've heard that plenty of times, man. Dude, dudes be on some stuff. Same way how them boys was out there fighting on the corner, talking about you coming through on our camp, man. It is kind of, it's not necessarily like what's in, it, it is, but it ain't like, it's not necessarily like worrying what's in another man's pockets, but it's definitely similar to what's going on in another man's house. Because I don't care what you and you like, who are overly concerned with other people's business. Don't you, man, don't you know this man told you you were busy about it? Why you care about other people's affairs? Especially if they ain't got nothing to do with you. I never stood that one. I never understood that one. That's none of my business. What go on with us, that's my business. You know what I'm saying? See, if you roll with us, that's my business. Meaning that you my business, meaning your welfare. You know what I'm talking about? Not your personal business, but your welfare is my business. You know what I'm saying? Your personal business is not my business. Y'all already know that. I'll never stop reiterating that fact because I know people are not accustomed to that. I am not finna find out your personal business. I'm not going on an excursion for things that don't concern me. Why? Why would you do that? Somebody please explain to me. Why are you that invested in people's lives? That means you ain't got nothing going on. And when I say nothing going on, that means you're not focused on your soul, man. Man. You know what I'm saying? You can't be saving your soul focusing on somebody else's soul. If you ain't no preacher, that ain't your job. How you worry about somebody else's soul and you ain't got the spirit? That's insane. I uh, praise you who indeed, bro. That's insane, bro. You know what I'm saying? And then if you was concerned with somebody, wouldn't you do what he said in Galatians, that you would bear the burdens of your brother by fulfilling the law of Mashiach, meaning that you would care about restoring them if they was in a place they ain't supposed to be in, not talk about them. But you would actually want to be an aid, help and a relief to your neighbor. Like, nigga, stop it. Come on, man. Ezekiel 37, what verse? Or verse 5. Ezekiel 37, 5. It said, Thus say, if you who are him unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I'll lay sinews upon you, will bring flesh upon you, and cover you with skin. I bring flesh upon you, and cover you with who? Put breath in you, and you, shall, you? Put breath in you, and you shall live. I put what? Breath in you, and you shall live. Did he put breath in Adam? Then Yahushua shall breathe breath in his apostles. He said, I'm going to put breath in you, and you're going to do what? Live. Because he said, hey, he said, can these dry bones live? He said, you know. Come on. You shall know that I, Yahuwah. Oh, yeah. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise. Behold, the shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. 
Mm. And I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them. The skin covered them above, but no breath in them. Notice he said there was no breath in them. Let me tell you something, right? Them bones was alive the whole time. They were alive the whole time. The difference was the bones didn't know they were alive. But Yahuwah knew they were alive because he knew that his breath was in them. So, and of course, this is showing you the resurrection of the dead. He put skin to skin, bone to bone, and form you just like he think it's hard for this man to reanimate you, bro. What about the people who've been created? Your point? Look, what are you talking about? This is insane. Continue. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, come from the four winds, O breath, breathe upon these slain that they may live. That they might live, baby. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived. And they stood lived. up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Great army. Then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Yasharal. Mm -hmm. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, our hope is lost, we are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of in you. You shall live. You shall live. See, they'll tell you graves. Me, that's the place we've been taken in captivity. That word literally means grave. Literally means grave. That man gonna rape the dead and bring you back, just like he told you he was gonna do. John six and sixty three. Like it says, right? Like eat, add, right? It's not the flesh that so much is the issue. It's what's inside you before the flesh corrupts. You know what I'm talking about? And John 63 going to tell you that. Listen to what the Lord said. It is the Ruach that quickened the, the flesh. The Ruach that make you alive. The That's flesh what profit nothing. Season. Flesh don't give you no gain. The words that I speak unto you, Ruach in our life. That word in you, man, you'll never taste death. That's what he meant by that. That man, Ruach in you, that word in you by faith, you'll never die. You may rest for a season, but you'll never die. He told you that in Revelation, man. Read it for him. 14 and 13. We go back to Isaiah, I mean, Joel 26. Where I'm at with it. I ain't going to get everything I want this evening. Lord knows. Let you who will be esteemed. Come on with it, sir. And I heard a voice from Shamahim saying unto me, Right, Baruch the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, mm. saith the Ruach. That they they works what? That they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Man, if you die in the Lord, man, you good. You ain't got to worry about nothing. You ain't got to worry. But Job answered and said, how have you helped without power? Mm -hmm. Save you the arm, no strength. How have you counseled that I have no wisdom? He said, how have you given counsel to him that have no wisdom? And how have you plentifully declared the thing as it is? See, do you remember what the writer of the epistle of Hebrews said? I, want you to, I think it's Hebrews chapter 2. Come over here to Hebrews chapter 2, right? I want you to look at a statement. That's made here. Let me make so because I might be in the wrong chapter with it. Because I don't really want to mention it. I want you to see it. I think I'm in the wrong chapter with it. Give me a second. Dang, this thing ain't even charged. There it is. Yeah, chapter five, man, chapter five. Hebrews chapter five, five and one. And on them that are, he said, but for he that himself is also comfort, compassed with infirmity, and by reason, hereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself, to offer for sins. Listen, he said, who can have compassion on him that is ignorant and out of the way, but a person who has weaknesses himself. So when you come back over here to Job chapter 26, this man said, have you counseled him that have no wisdom? Have you plentifully de declared the thing as it is? You know that man say, I declared my Abba's name and they received it, right? You do know if you don't have no wisdom, it's because you don't fear God. You don't think that man didn't sit down and counsel these people? He did these things. Look at the next verse, folks. He said, to whom have you what? Uttered words. And whose Ruach came from you? Dead. Or from under the what? The waters. And the inhabitants thereof. What y'all think that means, man? Dead things are formed from under the waters. What you think that means? What you ascertain from that? What's causing all this? That's what Ric Flair said. What's causing all this? 
Who's bringing all this about? I'm waiting on y'all. I'm gonna see if you got something for me. Oh, they ain't got nothing for me, man. Genesis one and one, man. They ain't got nothing for me. Listen to it. Say in the beginning, Elohim created Shamahim in the earth, and the earth was without form and void, darkness upon the face of the deep, and mm -hmm. the Ruach of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. Moved upon the face of the what? Of the waters. You can see that that's what? There's death on the earth, didn't it? What happened after that? And Elohim said, let there be light, and mm -hmm. there was light. And Elohim saw the light, that it was good, and Elohim divided the light from the darkness. And he said, in him it was the light, and the light is the what? Life of mm -hmm. men, did it not? It said, Elohim is light, and no part what? Darkness. Mm -hmm. You see how so dead things were formed under from under the water because of course with that water he made a separation for the heavens and earth. So when you go to Matthew, what do you see this man doing? But we're gonna just skip to Romans six because I'm not finna spend an inordinate amount of time on this. Romans six and one. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that mercy may abound? Mm, God forbid. forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Mm -hmm. Know you not that so many of us as were immersed into Yahushua HaMashiach were immersed into his death? Mm -hmm. Therefore we are buried with him by immersion into death. That like as You buried with him where? Into death. You notice that dead things are made under the water. See, what are those dead things? Of course he's going to tell you. It's death to sin. It's death to the world. It's death to the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life which is not of Elohim. The love of God ain't in you when you're moving like that. Come on with me. That like as Mashiach was raised up from the dead by the esteem of the Abba, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we, we shall, shall also be, be and of his resurrection. Come on. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with. That See how dead things saved. are made under the water. That's why skin for skin, a man to give everything for his life. Didn't we just talk about on Wednesday? A, a, a man... Who save his life is going to lose it. A man who loses life is going to gain it because for your life, you'll give up everything. See, Satan was looking at it as for his natural thing. See, we're going to give up the things that's going to keep separated from God. We'll give that up. That's why, Shalom, Brother Mahar. That's why, Paul, that's why Paul said, man, I count things as lost. I count it as dumb that I might win Yahoo Shaham Shiah. Skin for skin, you willing to give up everything for your life? What you willing to give up for yours? See, we ain't talking about this stuff like a goofy nigga talking about you'll give up money and this, that, then the third. You, you'll curse God. No, that ain't what we talking about. See, Satan uttered them words and the Lord made him look stupid with him when the time was time was right. But come on back to, to Job 26, man. Read verse five again. I want you to see how he is literally, Job is literally referencing creation. I just want y'all to see that shit. Job 26 and five. The dead are formed from under the waters, and the inhabitants thereof hell is naked before him, and destruction have no cover. You man don't see the grave, and those in it. Don't you know Hebrews tell you this man's eyes is open unto him whom we have to do. Everybody naked. Come on with it. Listen to the next thing he say. He stretched what out the north over the empty place. and hang the earth upon what nothing. That's taking you back to Genesis, is it not? Listen to the next thing he say. He bind up the waters in his thick clouds, and the cloud is not rent under them. He said the clouds don't even get tore up when he do this. This is the next thing he, he said. He hold back the face of his throne. And spread his cloud upon it. That man say he hold back the face of his throne. You can't even see it. And he cover it with the heavens. Which is what you've seen in Ezekiel chapter 1. When he give you the vision of the Lord coming. Which is what Paul said. I got caught up to this third heaven. He say, I can't tell. You know what I'm saying? The Lord knows. See, you can't see the throne. The throne of heaven is behind them heavens. You can't see it though. That means Job knew a little son that most of us didn't know, that don't know, shoot, that don't know to this day. Listen to the next thing he say. He had compassed the waters with bounds until the day and night come to an end. He said he compassed the waters with what? With bounds. What does that mean? I need y'all to pause for a minute and think about verse 10, man. What does that mean? He compassed the waters with bounds until the day and night come to an end. Get Genesis 8 and 22, man. Mm -hmm. I'll dog walk it for you. It's all gravy, baby. Let you who will be esteemed, man. You know, hallelujah for Yahoo shop, man. This stuff is stuff like 
And I ain't saying that because I'm nice. I'm saying it's light. When I say it's light, I'm saying it's light for all of y'all. And you know why it's light? Because you know Lord. You know what I'm talking about? Now, it just may be something that you ain't thought upon. But see, when the information come, you be like, yeah, that was light. See, I say these things for a reason, for you not to be sloshing around thinking things are just so extremely difficult or hard to understand. It's just some things you ain't never stopped, paused, and considered on. That's it, really, to be honest with you. You'll understand it when it's explained. That's all. Listen to him. Say, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest. While the earth what? Remains. Seed time. And harvest. And what else? Cold and heat. And what else? Summer and winter. And what else? Day and night shall not cease. Mm, while the earth what? Remains. You know he said he gonna make a new heaven and a new what? Earth. Mm. And when he make a new heaven and a new earth, he said there'll be no need for the moon or the sun there because Elohim mm -hmm. and the lamb will be the light of it. So what did it mean when he said he accomplished the waters with bounds until the day and night come to an end? I want you to come back to Genesis chapter one, you dig? I want you to pick me up at verse five, man. Listen to what he said. And Elohim called the light day and the darkness he called night. Listen to what he said. The evening and the morning were the first day. Come on with it. And Elohim said, let there be a firmament in the midst of let the waters. Let there be a what? A firmament in the midst of the waters. In the midst of the who? Of the waters. Mm. Let it divide the waters from the waters. Let him divide the waters from the what? From the waters. Listen to what he and said. And Elohim made the firmament and divided the waters which under the firmament. And were. above the firmament, right? Mm -hmm. he, said the, he said to compass the waters with bounds until the day and night have an end. Go back to Genesis 20. I mean, Job 26, right? In verse 10, tell them what bounds mean. I know y'all know what it means in English. I just want you to have the word is used there. Okay, the statute ordinance limit, something limit. prescribed. Some prescribed. What did it mean? He say the waters, uh, he say he compassed the waters with a limit until day and night end, Revelation 21 and 1. What are the waters doing? Separating the heavens from the earth, right? That's what you heard in your law, right? Revelation 21 and 1. Listen to what he said. And I saw a new Shamahim and a new earth. For the first Shamahim and the first earth were passed away. There was no more sea. Mm -hmm. Now John saw the Kadash city, New Jerusalem, coming down from Shamahim. How can the new how can New Jerusalem come down from Shamahim unless the waters had done they bounds have been removed? He said, till day and night end, right? Mm -hmm. Day and night has come to an end when New Jerusalem comes. You know why day and night has come to an end? Ain't no more darkness in the earth. What's the need for night? Remember, Elohim is what? Light and no part what? Now, why in the world would you think it'd be darkness in New Jerusalem? That's insane. Come on back to Job 26, man, verse 10. He have compassed the waters with bounds until the day and night come to an end. The pillars of Shamahim tremble and are astonished at his reproof. Didn't this man tell you? Get Haggai chapter 2, man, verse 1 on the hive, man. See, a lot of people talk trap, man. You waiting for somebody to come out of the sky? Show sure is. And you don't want to see him either. People say that stuff because they trying to shake you. Man, people say, you don't be realizing people say stuff, man, to make you not believe in God, man. And when I say believe in God, I believe in what he said, what he promised, what he intended to do. You got to pay attention to that, man. Come on with it, good sir. Verse 1. Mm -hmm. saying the seventh and the and the one and twentieth day of the month came the word of Yahuwah by the prophet Haggai saying speak now to Zerubbabel the son of Shatiel governor of Yehuda and to Joshua son of Jehoshadak the high priest and to the residue of the people saying mm -hmm. who was left among you that saw the house in her first esteem how you see he it said, now he said who was that among you that seen the house in her what in her first esteem mm. and how do you see it now how you see it now baby Paul you know what that sound like he said, when we see him, we will know, we will see him as he is. Because you didn't see him in his first esteem. But by the grace of the Lord, you'll see him in his second in peace, though. Come on with it. It's not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing. Yet now be strong, O Rupabel, saith Yahuwah, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Jehoshadak, the high priest. And be strong, all you people of the land, saith Yahuwah, and work. For I with you, saith Yahuwah, hope. A lot of people don't realize that Rupabel is representative of Peter. And Yahushua, son of Jehoshadak, well, that's obvious. Go ahead. The word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my rock remain among you, fear you not. But thus saith Yahuwah of hosts, yet once it is a little while, I will shake Shamahim. He's going to do earth. what with Shamahim? Shake Shamahim. I'm going to do what with it? Shake Shamahim. And what's going to happen after and that? the earth and the sea and the dry. 
I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. I will fill his house with the steam, saith you who of hosts. I mean, say so he gonna shake it, man. Ain't that the pillars trembling at his presence? Let's come on back over here to Job 29, because I'm done with that. Well, did you bring me one of them caboosers when you finish doing whatever it is that you're doing? Come on with it, good sir. Said Job 29. Matter of fact, don't even do that. Because I said that I was going to do this here, man. Let me go ahead and get this uh, out of the way. Come over here to Proverbs 13. Thank you. Proverbs 13 and uh, 24. Because I told y'all, man, we talked some of this stuff about tax. I got a lot of things to hit. And some things I got to do tomorrow also that I, that I ain't even mentioned at this particular juncture. But let me go ahead. Oh, that page ain't even in this book. Hold on. That page ain't even in this book. I want to make sure that I don't. Uh, let me go ahead go to verse one, man. I'm going to move around. I'm going to touch a few things. Some of this stuff we done dealt with before. If you, of course, if you remember when we took our, uh, what's going on yet to die, man? Uh, our journey through the book of Proverbs and his testimony. So, but listen, Proverbs 13 and one, a wise son do what? Hear his father's instruction. But a scorner. Hear not rebuke. See, listen. First thing first, man, if you're a wise son, man, you're going to take the rebuke. Tell him what instruction is, man. You're going to take the moose off of your father. Yeah, that's moose That's discipline, chastening, correction. He said, but a scorner hate what? Rebuke. Hear not rebuke. See, somebody who's a scorner, tell him what a scorner is, man. You know, he told you don't sit in the seat of the scornful. He said, you're blessed when you don't sit in the seat of the scornful. That's what the book say. That ain't what I said. That's loots. That's a mock mocker. A mocker. Remember what we read earlier? And Jude, they mockers, sensual, not having the spirit. Nigga running his mouth all the time. They ain't going to never hear no correction. Why, son, receive correction? So the, one of the first things you would want to sit back and you want to pay attention when you're dealing with your child is do they mock and ridicule when you come to correct them? That would mean that it might not be a lot of wisdom in them. Now, now you have to also remember, you have to take into account what age your son is because you can't take that into account with a three-year-old or a five-year-old or a seven-year-old. Now, this son, I've been telling y'all for years, you cannot wait to put instruction in your child. Once they hit a certain age, it's over. You're not going to be able to implement that in them. Anybody that's telling you that you can wait till your child get a certain age to teach something, that nigga is devoid of intelligence as far as it pertains to interact. You should know that because you were a child and you knew full well that when your people came around the corner with something that they should have hit you off with earlier, you might have not realized that you should have did what they told you when they told you this when you were 12 till you were 23. You know what I'm talking about? There's a reason why the book say Proverbs 22 and 6. I've been telling this for years, but you could think I'm just talking. Nigga, I was a child. This is beautiful dealing with the word. I'm speaking from the aspect that I was a child. You cannot wait. You can't feel like when this situation get like this, then I'm going to teach them. You feeling them. You supposed to teach them before they get in the situation. Because then they're going to know what to do when they in it. You don't want to teach somebody what to do in something while they doing it when you have the opportunity to school them before it happens. That's laziness. That's just being lazy. That's just being ineffective. That's all that is, man. You school them before, then they can execute. What are you waiting for? That's insane. Go ahead, man. Proverbs 20, 26. Listen what he say. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from Tell him what train means. That's why I told you this other day. And uh, oh, brother Omar says being reactionary, definitely. And it's and I'm telling I mentioned this here because I just had this conversation on Tuesday. And I've told y'all this over the course of the years. You cannot be upset with a child for something that you have not taught them. You really not mad at that child, you really mad at yourself. And you mad at yourself because you didn't do your job. Why do you have an expectation for a child to know what to do in a situation they ain't never been in before? Why do you have that thought process that they should just know what to do? 
And then on top of that, be mad with them when they don't. Now this child getting yelled at, you don't even know what it's doing for their psyche because they don't even know why they're getting yelled at. Then you yelling about to them about something that you ain't taught them and now you didn't even tell them why you yelling and teach it to them after you chastised them. Nigga, that's horrible. That is absolutely horrible. There's no way around that. How you gonna chastise somebody for something they don't know and then still don't teach them after to they to they to the view of themselves, to their confidence? Do you understand? You just train is a canot that's to train to dedicate to inaugurate to train up to dedicate to dedicate to inaugurate that means you got to be dedicated in it and in, in instructing them you got to be dedicated in that that's got to be personal to you come on back to proverbs 13 man let me see what other verse we want man i'm just have to you know it's a few things here and there I think we're going poverty and shame to him that refuses who don't want no Musa. Poverty is race. Poverty. And the shame is cologne. Shame, disgrace, dishonor. You know, sin is a dishonor to any people. That's what the book say. So you might think of it as on the natural side. When you refuse instruction, that man say you're going to have poverty and shame. Didn't he tell you I counsel of you to buy gold in the fire that you might be rich? Didn't he tell you that you should have your treasures in heaven? Our chastening, which of course y'all know that he is, man. But if you regard his correction, that man will esteem you. That's Kabod, to be heavy, to be weighty, to be grievous, to be hard, to be rich, to be honorable, to be esteemed. John 17 and 1. Remember, he was chastened for our iniquity. Ain't that what Isaiah? Read Isaiah 53 and 1 first. Fuck that, John, man. That's true. I got, I got a little time. Who have believed our report and to whom is the arm of Yahuwah revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He have no, no form or, nor comeliness and when we shall see him, no beauty that we should desire him. Mm, we ain't seen nothing honorable about him. Listen. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and mm. we hid as it our faces from him. He mm. was despised and we esteemed him not. Mm -hmm. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of Elohim and afflicted. Mm. But he wounded for our transgression, mm. bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our shalom upon him. Tell him what chastisement means. It's Musar again. Musar, the correction, the discipline, the chastening was laid on him. He said, he that regard, tell him what reproof means. He that regard. Reproof is toka call, rebuke, correction, reproof. Same thing as Musa, mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. words, same thing. You know what I'm talking about? Come on to uh, John 17 and 1. That jump must be moving slow on them niggas. Man. Said these words spake Yahusha and lifted up his eyes to Shamahim and said, Abba, the hour has come. Esteem your son that your son also may esteem you. Mm -hmm. As you have given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. Mm -hmm. And this is life that he hadn't even done. Look back over here, man. That's verse 24 with it. Proverbs 13, 24 with it. He that spares his rod hate his son. He that what? Spare his rod hate his son. Mm. But he that love him chasten him be time. Him be time. Go ahead and tell him what chasten him B times is, man. We'll talk about Rod in a minute. That's Musar for chasten again. Mm, Musar again. Again, the reason why instruction is used for the word correction is because that's what it's about. How a child is not going to know right from wrong until you instruct them. So, so, so I'm focused on this. You can't see. Tell them what rod is by definition. Because I told you the other day, black people take this mean you supposed to beat the brakes off your churn. No, that's not what that means. That's Shebet, rod, staff, branch, offshoot, club, scepter, tribe. You know what I'm talking about? Or correction. Correction. So when you when you would look at it and say, what did he say? Son. He that spare correction hates his son. He corrects him 
often. That means I'm going to take the time to teach you. What does your law say you're supposed to do with your children? Teach them while you're in the house, while you lay down, when you rise up. When you look at Mashiach, he called his own sons stupid. And after he called them stupid, guess what he did? He instructed them. And he showed them the cause of their stupidity. He didn't he say, oh, fool, slow and hard to believe all that the prophets have spoken slow and hard. I mean, he called them stupid. But he taught them. You cannot physically cost a child and you have not taught them. If a child does not know how to perform the things that you want them to put them, what is a child? Nothing other than what you teach it. And if you don't teach them, then they're left to their own devices to figure it out. And do you really want to trust a child to their own devices to figure it out? Because Yahuwah, you see what Yahuwah did when he left you to your own devices, you destroyed yourself. What you think that child gonna do? What you say, Sylvie? What you think the child gonna do? Sylvie ain't got nothing to say. He said, I know what they gonna do. They gonna tear up my house and I'm gonna beat the brakes off of them. Come over here to Proverbs 22. That's what I'm gonna do. Square here. But you can read verse 14. Shoot, we there. A holy! It's a deep pit. He did it. He that is who? A port of Yahuwah. Boy, if Yahuwah hates you, boy, that man gonna let a hoe take you down. Play with it if you want to, man. I don't want y'all to pucker. You know, everybody like to read Ecclesiasticus. A wicked woman again to the port of I ain't finna, I ain't gonna read that to you. Mm -mm. That man say the mouth of a strange woman is a deep pit. I got this. You know what mouth is? That's pay. Now I'm gonna read Jazur again because we talked about it the other day. It just ain't no strange woman. It's a prostitute. It's a harlot. The words of a whore is a deep pit. You know, that's a mock Shabbat, a Shaka, that's a pit, that's a chasm, that's a ditch. That man say, boy, if you get, that man say, boy, Yahuwah got indignation against you. He finds you abhorrent. You have been cursed. He has denounced you. Well, you see how serious that is, man? You know how many people you can clearly say, God, see God hate? Because he let a hoe take him down. Because he let a hoe take him down. That's why I told you the other day, y'all better stop running around here telling these women they all queens, man. Some of them women are harlots. Why would you dare, if you know you moving around like a virtuous, godly woman, why dare, why, why would you even want a harlot to be on par with you? You should take that as disrespect. You carrying yourself tastely, godly, ugly. The law of kindness is in your mouth. The law of wisdom is on your tongue. You fear your whore. Therefore, you getting praised and you going to let a whore be compared to you? You ought to hit your own self upside the head with a bottle. Don't disrespect yourself like that by allowing a foot dragon scallywag hoe to be at the same level as you when she ain't doing the work you doing. Why are you going to let a hoe be compared to you and you living uprightly and she living like a scallywag? But I didn't want you to know, son, boy, if you seen a man get taken down by a whore, boy, God hate him. You think you would let any of his sons get tackled and, and, and swallowed up by a scallywag? Listen, I'm not talking about what happened to you before you served the Lord. That's male or female. I ain't talking about that. Because when you don't know no better, you can get caught up with a lot of things. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about once you done put your feet squarely on the rock, both feet, left and right, locked in, I will not be moved. You think he going to let you, you think he going to let his daughters get fooled up with an old bum, square head nigga? Think he really going to let that happen? If you was lusting after this man with every bit of lust you got in your body, he'll find a way to make sure you won't be fooled up with him. You know what I'm talking about? He going to make a way. Uh-uh, that's not going to happen. Not one of mine. You think this man gonna let you get swallowed up by a scallywag hoe boy? And you serve your boy? Nah, man. He said they only call them queens when they half naked. They're picking them with their goods showing. All of a sudden they're goddess. Mm. Yeah, that's what them boys be doing. But a lot of these women be out here because they be ex hoe 
hoes and they be wanting to talk about there's somebody a queen. She ain't no queen. That's a whore. You know what I'm talking about? I say that because I want you ladies to stop allowing yourself to be equal with women who are not equal to you. If you know you doing what you have called you to do and you being the woman that you has ordained for you to be, don't let no woman because because she black and she a woman like you. Don't let her be she out here living like a whore and call her what she is. If you a hoe, I'm going to call you a hoe. Straight like that. If you a bum, I'm going to call you a bum. If you a weirdo, I'm going to call you a weirdo. I'm not going to boost your self-esteem. Ah, you know you a real queen. You're a whore. Stop living like one. You can't be calling people that. You shouldn't be living like one. If somebody told you that, maybe you'd stop. Man, you can't sugarcoat people to stop doing destructive behavior. You want to be all nice. She going to go right back to home when you walk away. Maybe if you tell her she a hoe, she might go home and think about it. That nigga, the negacity of this nigga to call me a hoe. But I am one. Maybe she'll want to stop. Now, I'm be honest with you. If a nigga a bum and you tell him he a bum, he ain't going to change. He don't care. He comfortable with it. Once a man get comfortable with not having no money, man, it's going to take a traumatic experience in his life for him not to be like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about being rich either. I'm talking about once a man get comfortable of not having it in his pockets where he can just sit around and like he can go to bed every night knowing that he didn't do nothing to earn him him nothing oh yeah baby ain't nothing you can do with him i'm telling you that's why y'all be both that's why you supposed to find out a nigga track history you know what i'm talking about see when you meet a woman you want to know what her emotional history is for his dudes along with how many men she's been with physically but you really want to know her emotional uh history but with a dude well you want to know his history of his work ethic you know what i'm talking about that's what you want to know because if he's always had a work ethic, then that's not going nowhere. That's not going nowhere. That don't mean that he got to be rich or nothing. If he ain't got no work ethic, baby, let me tell y'all something, man. You don't turn 30 and get no work ethic. You know what I'm saying? That's something you had when you were young. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, man, that's something you got when you were young, man. He ain't got no work ethic. Baby, you start. I ain't gonna lie to you. You scarred, man. Just hang it up. Yeah, just hang it up. Just hang it up. Because that's a nigga who comfortable not doing nothing. He cool with that. I mean, when he was in high school, he was like, damn, man. You meet a nigga in high school, the nigga say he ain't had no job when he was in high school. I mean, that nigga was cool waiting on mom dude. So pop. Unless your people had it. You know what I'm saying? But most of us, your people ain't had it. You had to go get a job. Your people ain't had it. That nigga still ain't gonna get no job. That mean he ain't even want no fresh kicks when he went to school. He ain't even want no. I ain't talking about the fly shoes. He ain't want no brand new ones. That boy was just gonna wait for mom Deuce them to buy school clothes, man. That boy was cool with that. Yeah, that no, no, oh no. You meet a nigga, and you be like, man, you ain't no nigga. And you talk to him, you like, man, what you want to do with your life? It's one thing. He said, man, you know, I don't even know. You run across a nigga, he ain't even thought about it. Cause when somebody ain't thought, when somebody thought about it, but they ain't figured out what they want to do, you be like, man, I just ain't figured it out. You know, he been thinking about it. Nigga be like, man, you know, I don't know, bro. I ain't never really thought about it. That nigga, boom. That's the nigga looking. He gonna be looking for a woman to live with. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. He gonna be looking for a woman to live with, man. That nigga gonna get 35. Talking about, come on now, you know. Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. They pay attention to it. You know what I'm saying? What we at with, man? Give him verse 15. Listen to what he say. Foolishness is what? Bound in the heart of a child. We say, but the rod of what? Correction shall drive it far from him. Man, look here, man. Tell him what foolishness and bound is, man. That's the same. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, too, now. You want to pay attention to that with a woman, too, boy. You want to pay attention if she lazy, too. Because, boy, the last thing... Shalom, Brother Herman. The last thing you want... You remember what T.I. said? That all... All the fine women in the world. I had to get the laziest hoe in America. Do you know what I'm talking about? Cook, clean, flip the cushions, do something. But you don't want no woman who lazy, boy. You know what I'm saying? You don't want no woman who's unremarkable. Meaning, 
You know what I'm talking about? Straight up and down. She ain't got no intelligence. She ain't got no talents. She ain't got no skills. Coochie is not a skill. I don't care how good she can freak you. That's not a skill, man, that you should be valuing. You know what I'm talking about? I don't care how good she looks. We talk about that. That's not something you should be valuing over the fact she ain't got nothing going on. You don't want no woman looking for no man to throw her no life preserver? Yeah, you don't want that, man. See, now, see some of these hard-headed women going to think that many. See, this what's wrong with these men. They don't want to be a provider. See, provider you is trick. Ain't nobody no trick. You got women out here looking for somebody to throw them a life preserver. You know what I'm talking about? That ain't no woman you want because she ain't going to do nothing. She going to watch you go to work every day, pay every bill in the house, and expect you to clean and cook when you get home. Why are you even here? Because she ain't going to want to work. They say, I'm here looking for a life preserver, man, but you better not fall for that. Well, she got a mountains of consumer debt. Do you know what I'm talking about? We ain't even talking about if she got children that she gonna want you to take care of. What she trying? You already know, boy. Project Pat told you. You know what he told you, Simmy? He don't know what Project Pat told him. You know what Project Pat told him? Don't save her. She don't want to be saved. Don't save her. Leave that woman alone. For your, I ain't saying that because there's necessarily something wrong. That's for your own sanity. This ain't really got nothing to do with her. That's for your own sanity. Because you're going to be a drunk alcoholic, man. You're going to be a drug addict. You're going to want to kill yourself before it's over with. Look here, man. It ain't no different if you as a woman, you find a, a, a bump. Look here, man. Women, now, I, I can't even say that now. Not, not in 2024 because there's a lot of women with big backs now. You know what I'm talking about? But a woman's shoulders and back ain't meant to carry no man. And she's going to crumple under that weight. Now, she around here miserable. She on psychotropic meds, getting drunk every day because she taking care of big, grown, rusty niggas who feel like he can't ding a ling talking about submit to me. You ain't submitted a job application in a year. <laughs> <laughs> Nick. You want somebody to submit to you? You ain't submitted for a job, sir. How somebody going to yield to that? I told you, little brother, that's that's what the dude was telling him. I just remember having that conversation with my homeboy when I was in jail, man. Uh, back in about by, by 05, man. I told you that boy, he got a lot of sin in that But he was like, yeah, man, you drop that meat on him, you have him under control. I said, yeah, boy, that don't work. And one thing I knew, he was broke, too. That broke nigga logic. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? That broke nigga logic, because you ain't got no power in your life. So you think the only power you got is slinging wee-wee. Man, I'm going to tell you something, man. You could be slinging some top notch wee wee boy, but if you ain't got nothing going on, well, that junk wear off after a while. She like this here, yeah, that wee wee good, nigga, but I've been paying the rent by myself for four years. I'm tired. When you gonna get a job? He said, My job is to swing this hammer. Well, you finna swing out the other side of this door. All jokes aside, gentlemen, and y'all already know this. This is to teach the young boy. A woman cannot respect the man that she take care of. She don't look at you as a man. She look at you as a son. She can never respect you. You can say what a word say. And the words say a lot of things. But a woman's nature is a woman's nature. And she can't respect you if she taking care of you. Now, if you around here feel like you can't respect a nigga because you pitching in, you just a selfish, entitled, square-faced hoe. That's what you is. You know what I'm talking about? But we didn't have that conversation. Some of y'all mamas was wives. And some of y'all must was concubines. So I don't know how you even gonna speak from the aspect of that of that conversation if you know your mama was a concubine. If your mama was a wife, that's a different conversation. That's right. It's supposed to be a help, not a liability. You want that man to take care of everything. And what am I getting? Chicken Alfredo and, and pre-owned vagina. But a lot of these girls can't cook. You can't take me out? Hell no. Take yourself out. Yeah, that's a lot of girls. This girl can't cook out here, man. All she can give you is a hot pocket. And I ain't talking about one twin or lay it, too. You know, like this here, get you, get you some cereal. Cereal? 
man, what Scarface said, man, what happened to the women like mama who could lead your feet, lift all we had made? Golly, that's terrible. Come on, man. Tell him what uh, foolishness and bound is. Man, that's horrible. Foolishness is if a left, that's foolishness or folly, silliness. You know, it's always going to be silliness in the mind of a child. But you got to teach it out of it. And bound is kashar, to bind, to tie, to bind together, to lead together, to conspire. Yeah, it's always going to be tied together in their mind. Man, they're a child. That's why you say, but the rod of correction will drive it far from them. You have to sit down and you got to teach them. Do you see how much folly Israel was in, man? And what did you who would do in that wilderness? He sat down and taught you. The world was bound with folly, so he sent Noah as a preacher of righteousness. Now, unfortunately for that world, they chose not to listen. Unfortunately for those who who uh, who didn't believe in the wilderness, they met their reward. And even with that foolishness in it that was bound, he sent the rod of correction by way of Yahusha HaMashiach and the manifestation of the flesh drive that far from you. Let's see what else we got, man. Read verse 17 for him. I just want that to be read on general principle. Bow down your ear and hear the words of the wise. Apply your heart unto my knowledge. Bow down your ears and apply your heart to my knowledge. Hear the words of the wise. It's a pleasant thing if you what? To keep them within you. They shall be what? With all be fitted in your lips. That your trust may be in who? Yahuwah. That your trust may be in who? Yahuwah. That your trust may be in who? Yahuwah. Okay. Known to you this day, even to you. Go ahead. Have not I written to the excellent things and counsels and knowledge? What up? That I might make you know the certainty of the words of truth, that mm. you might answer the words of truth to them that send unto you. He said that you might know the certainty of the words of truth. I want you to listen to verse 24, man. Listen, what? Because remember, right? Let me tell you something, man. It's certain type of people that you have to avoid. Listen to what the man tell you. Make no friendship with who? With an angry man. 23 and 12. Apply your heart unto instruction. In your Apply ears. your heart unto what? Apply your heart unto instruction. Keep your mind into correction. In your, in your ears to the words of knowledge. Mm. Withhold not what? Correction from the child. For if you beat him, with the rod, he, he shall not what? Die. Now come on, tell him what correction is, man, again. Is it Musar yet again? Mm -hmm. Okay, you know what that is. He say, now, let's look at beat him. See, that's what a lot of black like, See, you got to beat that child. That's in the call to strike, to smite, to hit, to beat, to slay, to kill. Now he said to, to beat or smite with the rod. You already know what that is. But let me show you something, right? Come over here to Corinthians. Uh, Corinth. Is it 1 Corinthians? It's 1 Corinthians chapter 4, I believe. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4. I want you to look at what he said. And I want y'all to think, was Paul finna come right here and beat these people? Look at it, right? 1 Corinthians 4 and... Uh, And 14. I want you to think was, was, was Paul coming around here to beat these people? This is what he's fathers. Boy, in Mashiach, Yahoo, read in Proverbs 23. He said, withhold not correction from a child. He said, you got to beat him with the rod. Now, listen, he's finna correct these people. You think he will walk around beating these people? This don't mean you beat your child. You can't. Let me tell you something, man. You are a horrible parent if you beat your child and you hadn't taught them first. You know what I'm talking about? Even before you who would kill anybody in the wilderness, he taught them before he killed them people. You are a horrible parent if you beating a child for you ain't taught them. Because at that point, you taking out on that child your incompetence and your insufficiency at you at your own job. That child don't deserve that. Look at man, and, and, and little muffin can tell you this here because I used to tell her that they not they they not entitled, not to say entitled that they not worthy enough for you to explain. You know what? I ain't in a good mood, baby. If I do this here, don't take it personal. You know they're a human being too, man. You know that you should not feel that you above to apologize to your child if you're wrong. Not come get some candy, come get something to eat, nigga. Be a goddamn adult and be man or woman enough to say, "My bad, baby. I shouldn't have did that. You didn't deserve that." I told you I am not one for the promotion and upholding of nigger raising. I don't believe in it. I didn't believe in it before the work. 
You know I love you, right? You know what I'm saying? Like straight up and down, man. That's a human being, man. They got thoughts, feelings, emotions, and perspectives also. Because you don't want to mess around and your child get grown and they don't fool with you. And you're going to run around here talking about this, that, there, and the third, man. Because you know, you know one thing niggas, I'm making this thing this got it. You know one thing niggas love to say? You being disrespectful because they don't agree with you. You know what I'm talking about? That's not disrespect. Now, that, that's when they get to a certain age. You know what I'm talking about? You know it's okay to have a conversation with your children. You know it's okay to understand their perspective. Just because you're trying to understand their perspective don't mean you're going along with them. That don't even mean that they have a right to tell you how, how to make a decision. See, they hit you with this nigga talking about some gentle parenting. Nigga, that junk trash. You know what I'm talking about? Because all it means is I'm not going to whoop you. Nigga, you who have been told you how to be a gentle parent, sit your maggot behind down somewhere and teach them goddamn kids, man. You won't have to beat the brakes off of them if you teach them. You only got to beat the brakes off the children because you ain't taught them nothing. Ain't nothing in their brain but folly. Ain't that what he just said? Mm -hmm. Fooling is bound in the heart of a child. Ain't nothing but folly. You ain't taught them nothing else. If you give a child the entertainment, all they're going to want to do is be entertained. That means you allow them to file that's already to be explored indefinitely because all they know how to do is to be entertained. If you want to have an exceptional child, you have to give them exceptional information. Now, if you want a basic child, you give them basic information. But see, that's a whole, and you got the great, you have the most exceptional information that a person can have. You had a word of you who. They don't get no more exceptional than that. Come on with it, good sir. Verse 16. Say, wherefore I beseech you, be followers of me. For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son. Faithful. And the Lord. Who shall bring you? Do I need to come with humility? You let me know. Because what did he just say these words? These were his beloved what? So. Who he begot through the what? Gospel. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Come over here back to Proverbs 23 and 13. Say, so withhold not correct in a child, for if you beat him with the rod, he shall not die. You shall beat him with the rod, he shall deliver his soul from hell. Mm. Notice that he said, if you give him, pause. You know what? Praise you. Come in, give me the epistle of James, chapter 5, verse 14. Tell me what that says. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the assembly. Mm -hmm. let, him, let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. The Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Mm -hmm. Confess faults one to another. Pray one for another that you may be healed. The mm -hmm. effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Mm -hmm. Elijah was a man substitute. To chasten your son while there is hope. Chasten your son while there is what? Hope. Spare not. Let not your soul spare for his crime. Mm. He said he didn't spare because if it's a lot of people fall short that you don't want to take the time to instruct them because you feel like they should have learned it the first time. I don't know why you thought that. How many things have you been corrected on that you mastered the first time? So why is you having that to that child? You a hypocrite. Why are you doing them like that? There are very few people on this earth that can master something the first time. You know what I'm saying? Where's the long suffering coming at? Is that not one of the why you not extended that to your child? Because Yahuwah doesn't operate like this. Let me say great work. I always had questions about parenting. Oh, well, praise the Lord, man. I mean, but man, being a parent, like you hear people say, this is not a manual for being a parent. The lies you tell. The book of Yahuwah been here the whole time. You just don't desire it. I say, man, ch physical chastisement is the last resort. That shouldn't be your go-to. But again, you should be teaching them. Your child can only be as good as what you taught them. If you taught them nothing, then they're not going to be any good. They're not going to be better than nothing. As simple as that. 
that that's as simple as that, man. Like I said, I was just having a conversation with, with one of the sisters about that, man. You know what I'm saying? And and I'll tell you this here, because she just mentioned like, well, look, I told you, little girls, they eye roll. I told you it's like that's that's uh that's standard. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's down down low because of how we raise is black. Like, disrespectful. No, don't slap the fire at that little girl. Let her know who you rolling your eyes at. Some of these little girls roll their eyes and don't even be aware that that's what they've done because it comes standard. What you really want to focus on is not the eye rolling, but what you got an attitude for by what I asked you to do or what I said to you. That you need to sort out. Then I need to let you know that regardless of what attitude you may have, I genuinely don't care. Because what I asked you to do is what I asked you to do. If you want to know why I asked you to do it, then you should just ask, why do? Why is it imperative for me to do this? You don't always got to hit them with because I said so. Unless it's something that they normally do on a regular basis, then you know why I told you to do it. If you know you're supposed to wash the dishes after dinner, then you know why I asked you to do that. I don't care because you don't want to do it. You want food to eat, don't you? So the least you can do is wash the damn dishes you ate them off of. But you know what that also coming at for them to understand that you are part of a unit and you have to play a role in that unit. Your role is not for you to sit on your funky behind dirtying up my, your drawers for me to wash them. I told a brother, brother and his old lady a couple of weeks. Every, I just told you that a couple of weeks ago. They supposed to be doing everything you don't want to. They getting sleeps. They getting eats. And you around here worrying about if they having fun and chilling. That nigga going to be trash when he get older. Your daughter going to be horrible. Ain't nobody going to want to be married to her. She lazy. Nobody don't give a damn about what they don't want to do. You don't want to do a lot of things, but you get up and do it for them. So you mean to tell me you ain't going to have this nigga get up and do something? You think you think you supposed to care? Nigga, my hobby be spot. Let me clean and everything. I'm talking about on rotation, nigga. And it's going to be some consequences if you think I have a whole damn flow chart out on the wall, man. This is what I expect from you day to day. That's how they can learn discipline. Like I told you, man, my granddaddy had me cleaning up at five, man. My older sister makes sure my nephew do what she don't feel like doing. Absolutely. You want them to learn discipline early. You don't put it in early, they may never have it. You don't even realize having them do all them things is this still type of work ethic and pride in their work early. You wait too long, that nigga gonna be sorry. Yeah, absolutely. And they need to know how to do things without being told. Because they know this is what this is what required of you. I shouldn't have to tell you to go do X, Y, Z. You should already know that. If I done told you and I done showed you, why do I have to keep telling you? If you done told your child, hey, this is your hamper. When your hamper get here, you need to go wash your clothes. I shouldn't have to tell you to come wash your clothes. I should only have to tell you to wash your clothes maybe the first one to three months this process of you doing this on your own. After 90 days, this should become a habit. I shouldn't have to tell you to go and wash your clothes. I shouldn't have to tell you to do that. You see, you got all them damn dirty clothes over there. And guess what I ain't going to do? I ain't going to wash them. Because if you don't wash, see, some of y'all will go do it for them. I'm not doing it for you. You're going to be dirty. And I bet you get your funky behind up and wash your clothes the next time. Because, see, you know what happened? When you wash it, when they're supposed to do it, they're going to expect for you to do it every time. They won't never do their job. They won't never do it. Because they know mama will do it. Daddy will do it. You done enabled them to be a sorry bastard. You know what I'm talking about? I'm going to tell you, shoot, my mom going to tell you, shoot, I'm not washing your clothes, nigga. You already know how to wash them. You already know what to do. What am I going to do it for? Yeah, I bet you get up and wash them dirty draw then. Mm, she said, that's why my work ethic probably been high. If I wasn't busy, I found stuff that you got to give them something to do. They shouldn't just be lounging around looking at TV and tablets all day. See, that's lazy. They're not even they watching nothing that's going to be beneficial to their mind. Their mind going to be mush. They ain't learning nothing. Nigga, if you're going to have a watch son, watch son educational where this nigga go no son. Or cut off that goddamn TV and give him a goddamn book. And I ain't talking about no fiction novel either. 
Make that nigga learn something, man. Put something in your brain that you could use. Teach him something out here in life that he need to know. I'm telling you, if they entertained all day, all they gonna want to be. Why you think these kids out here stupid as hell? But he turned out here dumb. You know what I'm talking about? And I mean that in the sincere. I've been to these, these young folks are dumb. I ain't even talking about dumb as far as they lack intelligence. They dumb in life. My homeboy is very high up at T-Mobile. This man would tell my parents, please teach your kids how to interview. This man say these kids coming in the interview talking about, hey, man, so, oh, I'm lit. This man literally said, what does integrity mean to you? I'm standing on business. Lord have mercy. These are niggas. These say, what well, money making sunny. The future of America. That's they kids. That, you know what I'm talking about? That's niggas. My age kids, man. That's terrible. That's terrible. If somebody asks you what integrity is and you say, I'm standing on business. So if your kids is being entertained 24-7, thinking life is a ball and having fun, how what you think he going to be doing when it's his time? He going to be unremarkable. Unexceptional, work ethic is terrible, ungodliness is on high. That's what's gonna happen. Because you're seeing it out here every day. But you know how we live in a bubble? Not my child. Well, if you ain't taught him nothing, it is gonna be your child. And that's why you who would say, bow your ear to instruction. You know what I'm talking about? That's why he tells us these things. He said, I needed instruction on things I needed to survive. And all I got was ask, respect. Well, you know what the one thing niggas love to say? If you don't know how to do something, figure it out. I shouldn't have had to figure it out. Somebody should have taught me. And instead of trying to figure it out when you don't know how to do it, ain't nobody even told you to have enough sense to seek out somebody who can. Ain't nobody even taught us to have enough sense to say, it's okay if you don't know what you're doing. Find somebody who can teach you. Instead of figuring it out and making mistakes on your way, making your life more difficult and making it harder for you to get to your destination because you don't know what the hell you're doing. And we take pride in that. I figured that on my own. It took you 10 years, nigga. You could have found somebody and it could have took you 10 days. You say, man, these just only know how to talk in Instagram language nowadays. And if these kids in front of your kids that stupid, then what you think the generation that your kids in, how dumb you think they going to be? You said, I'm thankful for the Ruach HaKadosh because I'd have been messed up. Listen, man, I'm not saying that to be disrespectful. I'm saying that because you see the state of the world out here. So wouldn't you want your kids to be way... It, it ain't even going to take much to be that far ahead of their peers. That's the sad part. It ain't going to take much. Come on, Sylvia. Where we at? Where we at? Just read Proverbs 19 and 18. Okay, swing back to Proverbs 23 and 19. God is a shard to go straight, to walk, to go on, to advance, to make progress. That man said, keep your heart straight into the way of Yahuwah. Listen to what he said in verse 20. Be not among who? Wine bibbers. And among riotous. Eaters of flesh. Hey, man, don't be around here fooling with them drunk idolaters, revelers, and partiers, man. Yahuwah was telling you a long time ago, don't be hanging out with people like to party all the time. Now sit back and ask yourself, man, when you was in high school and you was in college, what benefit did it get you to sit around these niggas who partied all the time? Then you need to ask yourself, where are those people in life who you was around who partied all the time? What have they accomplished? Yeah, that thing what LeBron said, man, which is true, which I done told you this before. If you want to be great, man, you have to sacrifice some things. You cannot be great and hang out with your family every day. There's no way. There's absolutely no way. That means you ain't even dedicated to enough to what it is that you want to be great at. Remember, I told you that a long time ago. There is no such thing as balance. Not if you want to be great. You know what I'm saying? That, that's the caveat. If you want to be great. There is no balance. 
Remember, we looked at it in the text. That's why the Lord said you got to be willing to forsake everything that you have. That's why you say you have to be willing to hate your father, your mother, your sons, your daughters, and your own life also in order to be great and to be called the son of the highest. There is a price to pay for greatness. There's a price to pay. That's why you notice a lot of people who fathers were great in what they did. Uh, the kids always say how their daddy wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? Now, that's something that you have to explain to your children that if you are a literally in a pursuit for greatness, you have to explain to them what it is that you're doing and why you're doing it. See, people used to get mad at Kevin Samuels when he said this here, but he was... For me, I thought this was just common knowledge, but then again, I should have known it's not. When somebody is going after being a high producer, a high achiever, going after greatness, there's absolutely no way you can expect this man to be at every foot. You don't stop chasing your purpose and your greatness for no woman you just met. And when I say just met, meaning you just met as you were in the pursuit of what it is that you do. That man been after that pursuit since he was probably seven, eight years old. Do you know what I'm talking about? And he probably, he looked like the type of man who probably sit down with his kids and explain to them what it is. Especially when you're doing something where you only have a finite amount of time to do it. Do you know what I'm saying? Only God, do you understand the work that man put in to become that? Do you know the things he probably missed? You see the results. He said, still partying in their 30. Shoot, these niggas partying in their 40. I mean, but even when they missed it, at least him telling his kids, his kids cannot. Hey, my father was a great man. My father was a great man. Look here, man. You could be a family man or you could be a great man, but you can't be both. Regardless of what anybody tell you, you can't be both. Some men want to be great and have a lasting memorial. You know what I'm talking about? These are sports of the natural things. You know what I'm saying? Being great in the word, you can be great in the word and the family man at the same time. You know what I'm talking about? That's a different conversation. This is more so about the focus on dedication to doing something. That's something you want to pass to your son because he has to understand the sacrifices, the dedication, and the work ethic required to becoming whatever it is that he wants to become. Come on, man. Where we at with Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23, man. And read verse 19 again. He say, hear you, my son, and be wise. Guide your heart in the way. Be not among wine bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty. And drowsiness shall clothe with rags. Hearken unto your father. That begat you and despise not your mother when she is old. Paul, we talked about that on Wednesday. We ain't got to read back over that again. Let me see what we got over here, man. Give me Proverbs 24 and 23. Say these also to the wise, not good to have respect to persons in judgment. Mm -hmm. He that saith unto the wicked, you righteous. Him the people going what? Curse. Nations going what? Shall abhor him. But to him that rebuke? Shall be delight. And a good blessing? Shall be upon them. You just pay attention to that there, man. Every, every man. Shall kiss lips that give a right answer. He say, prepare your work without. And make it fit for yourself in the field. And afterwards. Build your house. Listen what that man told you. Prepare your work when? Without. And make it fit for your, for your what? For yourself in the then field. Then he say, man, do what? Afterward, build your house. Listen, read prepare your work, man. Prepare your work without. Matter of fact, I got you. Hold on. Because I'm going to want you to swing the proverb 29. We forget off of God. I know this whole skipping. I didn't tell that by the... Uh, how them viewer numbers keep fluctuating. I want you to pay attention to that. And I and I wanted this read for a reason. Uh, I went straight to where I told you to be and not where we read reading from. Ain't that ain't that a funky hoax? That's coon for preparing. So coon is to prepare to establish a word that you should already know. Of course, when you know with work, that's a word you already know. Melica, that's your work, that's your occupation, that's your business so you need to establish your business without or outward the street the outside give me hebrews 3rd let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp let him go without place. him with, without the what without the camp Angry man told you prepare your works without that means on the outside street get your occupation and business established before you come in the house 
You got to be willing to go suffer with him. Make it fit is a, ta a thought, which is to prepare, to be prepared. Field is cultivated land. So you prepare yourself in the field. Well, the field is the world. Ain't that what he told him? And the good seed was sold by the son of man. And then he say afterwards your house. So it's getting yourself prepared for the faith so that you can build your house on a proper foundation. And how does that happen? Through proper instruction. How are you going to be established until you properly instructed? The child cannot prepare his house, build his house until it's given the proper instruction to know how to do so. I figured that, Misha, because I I, I, I I can always tell that from when I see the, if the numbers stay steady. That's when I know they're going to be doing whatever it is that they're doing. Listen to verse 15. The rod and reproof give wisdom. The rod and what? Reproof give wisdom. But a child left bring his mother to shame man look at man you have to correct that man if you don't man that's gonna bring dishonor to your household look at me, that's what i just we just talked about it already what i read that man say the rod and reproof will give skill correction gives skill to a child to know what not to do or what to do but if you leave them to their own devices he gonna bring dishonor to you that's why you can't do that you just can't let a child figure it out no, nah, man, that's where you feel like taking the most difficult road is the best way to go. People on. Look here, man, life is going to be difficult. And anything worth having is going to be a difficult road because you're going to have to be dedicated to the work required to get it. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to be dedicated to the work that required to get it. But to believe that, th that to, to, to make that road as easy as possible. See, I'm not talking about handing them something. I'm talking about making that road a little easier than, than what would, would be if they didn't have the opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Like the little clip, Nell has something that clip I put in that story. He said, yeah, you know, try that view of labor. So he understands what sacrifices is. Even if you got the money, you make him earn it. You just don't give it to him. He going to be a hoe, meaning he going to be soft. He's going to be enabled. He's going to be entitled. He's going to be weak. When I'm talking about weak, I'm not talking about weak physically. I'm talking about weak mentally. He won't know how to deal with adversity. There's a difference of letting the child figure it out when it's an adverse situation. Yeah, certain pieces of ad But you have to gauge your child. You just don't throw him like something. Just throw the baby in the pool. Let's see if he swim. You don't do that ignorant junk, man. You have to know that child and you still have to be there to maybe give him some instruction. But you still let him figure it out. Meaning you don't tell him the answer. You don't tell him what to do. You may give him some options. You might give him something to think about. Just like anybody else does when they run into a problem and they seek someone for counsel. You got to remember, man, your son is going to be somebody's father and husband one day. Your daughter's going to be somebody's wife and mother one day. And the level of father and husband and wife and mother they are are all be going contingent on the level of information you gave them when you raised them. We literally use the term raised, which is literally what Proverbs 22 and 6 say, which is to train them up. It is your job to raise them. It is not your job to give them fun experiences. I've been telling you that for years. That's not your job. Your job is to prepare them for life. Ain't that's what your father in heaven did when he manifested his son in the flesh? His job wasn't to come down here and eat, feast, and have fun with you. His job was to prepare you for everlasting life. So his job was to instruct you, to guide you, to correct you, to perfect you, to be the man and woman that he desired for you to be. You know what I'm saying? So that you could fulfill the role that he has already prepared for you. Yeah, man. Ain't that what he did? Mm -hmm. That's what he did. Now, hold on. We finna get out of here because this thing tripping. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got, oh, yeah. Remember 20, 29 and 17, man. See, you can read 16 for the wicked niggas in the back who be gnashing their teeth every time they clog on here. I don't know why niggas log on here and they don't like us. Get your funky behind on somewhere. You know what I'm right here? That's why you got kale in your teeth and your breath stinks. 
Proverbs 29 is 18, man. Say, when the wicked are multiplied, transgression increase. Mm, but the, the righteous, righteous shall see their fall. Correct your son. And he shall give you rest. Yea. He shall give delight unto your soul. You realize that he corrected his son and he gave us rest? Do you realize that that gave a delight? He said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Mm. He took pleasure in his son. Mm. Listen to verse 19. Listen to what he said. A servant will not be corrected by words. For though he understand, he will not answer. See a man's hasty in his words. There's more hope than a fool. Of a fool than Nigga, a who talk too fast. Ain't nothing you can do for him. Ain't nothing you can do for him. Listen to what he said, man. An angry man. Stir up strife. Furious man. Abound in transgression. So listen, man. You run across an angry man. He like to keep up contention. Stay away from him. You know what I'm saying? A man said, a man who furious. He said, boy, that man is abound in rebellion. Stay away from it. He said, what I notice is parents who are uh, not emotionally intelligent take the emotional moments as a kid as being smart. And they think because a child can emotionally respond to them means they know what they're doing. So they seek to teach them by withholding things out of spite. Now you do have to know your child too, because some children are more emotional than others. I didn't tell you this before, man. If you notice a child is being emotional, the first thing you need to do is try to calm them down. You know how, and I, and I and I didn't learn this from dealing with children. I learned this from dealing with adults that I noticed that when people were emotional and you tried to tell them something, they couldn't receive it. They were too caught up in whatever emotion. If a person's angry, they're not listening to you. If a person is distraught, they can't, they can't live, they can't receive what you're about to say. That's why when you look in the in the text, you who are trying to let them have it. Let them cycle through all that and then try to give them the answer that you need to give. Because, you know, the first thing you need to figure out, why were you emotional? What triggered that response from you? Then if you can figure out what caused that response, then you can figure out to show them, OK, boom, 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 so that they don't have that response. Because it's not for that moment. It's for five years from now. It's from 10 years from now. So that when they're a 25 year old man, they don't respond like they did when they were seven. Because that's why you see so many emotional men because nobody taught them that woo, 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 so they're going to keep acting like they did when they were seven. Now with women, you already know that women are going to be emotional. So you just have to let them cycle through that and then, that's when they try to, I don't want any, I don't want you to, to, to solve it for me. I just want you to listen. I'm just going to walk away from you here because I'm not here for that. Yeah, you got to figure that out for yourself. That's because he mentioned emotional intelligence. See, like, like the people, I, I don't like to get caught up in all these new terms people like to throw out there, man. You know what I'm talking about? Because people be writing books for money. It's not that some of that stuff ain't valid. But as some of these people like to say, if you're dealing with a man who, who's quote unquote emotional intelligent, then he's not going to deal with your emotional outburst for an extended period of time. He's going to cut you off. Because that means that you don't know how to regulate yourself. And that he's going to feel like this is disturbing my life. And why do you believe that you should be allowed to do that because you can't regulate an hour? You know what I'm talking about? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a professional, so I can't charge you professional rates. I don't have a degree. Would it be fair if I charge you two, three, four hundred dollars an hour? What credentials do I have for this? You know what I'm saying? I'm not a professional, so I charge half. You asking me to do something that I'm not qualified to do, so I think I should be compensated for. See, we're not talking about two people who together, there's something going on and you have a care and concern for them as a person and you talking to them about that. We're talking about people who have emotional and mental issues. If that nigga got mama issues and it's causing him to re respond emotionally and destructively, baby, that's not your job to figure that out unless you're married and nigga, now you're stuck with it. So if he ain't putting his hands on you, you're just going to have to deal with that you got a hoe in the bedroom. Do possibly in a lesbian relationship because you're with another woman. You just got to deal. But see, you supposed to sort all that out before you get married. Because if he got emotional outbursts before you get married, he's going to have emotional outbursts afterwards. And some people are like, man, shit, show emotion. The last thing you want is emotional, man. I promise you, I promise you don't want that. You don't even know what you're asking for. Ain't oh, okay. that what they be asking the first time. It may not happen the second. But if he keep doing that there for, for five. <laughs>
<laughs> now you in the group chat or telling your friend this whole let me tell you about this crying nigga here. You know what I'm saying? Now it's gonna come out in conversation that you've been talking about how he be crying all the time. Because your friend's snickering at him. I ain't saying it's right telling you what's happening. He said, I was that. You don't want that. It's pure hell. I'm just telling you what happened. See, listen here, right? I'm not telling you what's right or wrong. I'm just telling you what's happening in real life. This stuff happens. You know what I'm saying? I'm like that. He don't be, he don't listen to me. Because nine times out of ten, you having a conniption. That man don't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? I'm just being honest with you. It's not that you have it in the mo. It's not like my mama died. You know what I'm saying? Or something happened. And I'm like, I can see why she would be upset. You just emotional. Man. It's been plenty of times. I know I don't seen her do it. These niggas go to crime. You be like, what's wrong with you? I don't know. Man, I can't deal with that. I'm finna go lay down. Yeah, I don't know. I'm saying, what's wrong with you? I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm just crying. You know what I'm saying? I'm finna go get in the bed. I, I don't know what can't do nothing with that. <laughs> you gotta let yeah, you, you deal with that on your own. I can't do nothing with that. That's not no negative for no woman. That's just a real what you expect me to do. Sit there with you. Now I got to be sad because you said I'm gonna get to bed. You know what I'm talking about? You talk to me when it's over. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't want I don't want to deal with that. Man, what time is it, man? It's 11 so we get out of here because this thing tripping. Hopefully it won't be. Maybe I got too much stuff on here again, man. Um, we'll get to the other aspect. Uh uh skin for skin. Yeah. Yeah, it should be. I, I cut the replays on. Yeah, it's on. The, it's at at the top. I'm gonna make sure I ain't leaving nothing out, man. I think I got everything in my mind when it comes to that, because some of the other stuff is a little different. But you know what I'm saying? When you look at how the father instructed his son, children, as many as I love, I chasten and rebuke. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Because remember, when you hate your son. You know what I'm saying? Correction is not always about some type of physical chastisement. It's the this is because that's where the love coming at. When you love somebody, you take the time to teach them. You know what I'm saying? Like you really take the time. Remember, I told y'all before, man. When you when you look at a lot of young men, they be like, nobody never taught me that. You know, to realize somebody got to have care for you to sit down and give you information. That means the person care about you when they took the time to teach you something that you didn't know that could be beneficial to you. The great, That's one of the greatest ways you can show your child that you love them by teaching them something. If you see them out of pocket, teach them. Like I told you, I've been telling you this here, man. Monty do, used to do this all the time. If they out of pocket, ask them, what was you thinking about? Because your objective is to teach them why that mindset is not the proper mindset to have. If they can learn this is not the way that I should think in this situation and circumstance, they will be better for it because they can make better decisions. And when you make better decisions, you have better habits. And when you have better habits, you have better results. Hebrews 12 and 5. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speak unto you as unto children. My son, to spawn out you the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when you are rebuked of him. Mm -hmm. For whom the Lord love, he chastened and scourged every son whom he received. Mm, now, scourge meaning literally whooping you. You know what I'm saying? Now, that's that whooping of them tribulations like we read in Romans 5. But that's another conversation for another day. If you endure chastening, Elohim deal with you as with son. That man say, if you can endure being corrected, he can treat you like a son. But what son is he whom the Abba chase, chastened not? So what type of son are you if your father never taught you? But if you be without chastisement, where of all our partakers, then are you bastards? So that man say, if you are not going to be, if you are without the instruction that come from Abba through Yahoo Shah Hamashiach, you are bastard and not a son. Come on. Furthermore, we, we had our fathers of, of our flesh which corrected and gave reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Abba? So you your daddy are... corrected you and you respected him, but you won't do that for the father. Read in second Peter. Now, no chastening for the present seemed to be joy. To the next one. I know you niggas sliding out of here. I jumped out. I'm like, man, this thing be buffing. 